So uh, here's my take on a paper on Essential Tremor Plus, controversial new concept that was published in Lancet Neurology in 2020 um, that I wanted to give my thoughts or uh, comments on. Um, it, it's a really good paper and I think worth looking at. Um, so this paper uh, that discusses the Essential Tremor Plus concept uh, is written by a really good team. So Dr. Ilan Lewis, <clears throat> who is the uh, lead author, is very well known as one of the leading experts in tremor and tremor concepts. Uh, and he actually uh, is the editor-in-chief for the Tremor and Hyperkinetic Disorder Journal, which focuses primarily on tremor publications. And then there are really big names here. Uh, Dr. Benito is here, Stan Lefan, Stephen Frucht. Joseph Jankowicz. Joe Jankowicz has done a lot of work in essential tremor, is really a leading authority. Uh, Bill Ondo um, and Dr. Tan, uh, really, really good names uh, who are writing this paper and these people are uh, are worth listening to when they speak. So it, it the the abstract very nicely summarizes that uh, that the, the classification in 2018, the consensus statement from Movement Disorder Society uh, tried to uh, simplify essential tremor into something which is more specifically an isolated tremor and does not have a lot else going on. Uh, and they paid a huge uh, um, focus on the absence of other neurological signs. Uh, but this paper makes this uh, claim, which I personally agree with, so that will be my bias when reviewing this paper, is that that, that is an excessive oversimplification. And then many of these additional uh, abnormal neurological signs uh, listed such as dystonia or ataxia are typical part of essential tremor evolution for most of the experts like me. So they say that uh, these additional clinical features uh, are seen especially at a more advanced stage of the disease and this is also my personal stance. Actually uh, I was uh, trained uh, by my mentors uh, but with this concept that a third of patients with essential tremor will develop ataxia with the progression of the disease. And another third of essential tremor patients uh, will have hearing loss. So we know of these two common affiliation with what we have described as essential tremor. Now essential tremor does have a specific pathology in the brain, but is usually not a pathological diagnosis. It's usually diagnosis based on a clinical feature, such as the this particular tremor uh, early age of onset, strong family history, slow progression over time. And, and the authors make a very nice uh, comment here that the essential tremor is already a very heterogeneous uh, kind of a disease. So uh, it, it's, 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 it's itself a heterogeneous condition. Uh, and so if you create a new term to already what is something very syndromic, um, and, and is not one simple thing, it might might actually making it even more complex. So now you're trying to create um, a further layer uh, on top of the layer. So it may be that a very early, benign, young age, essential tremor patient may fit this classic ET criteria, but a later advance in their 50s, 20, 30 years of essential tremor, now having ataxia or dystonic posturing or hearing loss or other these kind of things, you're now going to call it AT+. Plus. So is it more uh, a progression uh, versus the actual real uh, separate disease or condition? So the biggest question to ask then will be, does those patients who have ET+, plus, did they never had ET and they always had ET+, plus? or is it that, they, that the ET patients always go on to ET+, plus or mostly go on to ET+, plus? based on this, these definitions. So uh, are we just talking about a, a natural progression of essential tremor or are we really talking about a separate disease? So uh, looking quickly through the paper again, uh, some other things uh, that ET progresses, we know that it develops worsening, there's spread of tremor, there's different forms of tremor that may show up. Non-motor features can show up such as uh, lightheadedness, dizziness, balance problems, uh, and, and things like that. So that's a separate condition itself. Dr. Ilan Lewis, the lead author, actually has done a wonderful work on uh, describing non-essential features. Even cognitive impairment have been described within essential tremor as a common feature, uh, meaning that happening to 20, 30% of the patient uh, and does not necessarily mean a change uh, in diagnosis. So uh, just because someone later develop cognitive change should not mean that their diagnosis should now be changed. 
Uh, and same is true for Parkinson's disease. So they make a very good analogy with Parkinson's that in Parkinson's disease, when we say Parkinson plus, we specifically are, um, are talking about a separate condition, which has a different pathology in their brain. When we say ET plus, we're just throwing the term out there without linking it with any specific differences in pathology. Or perhaps a PD plus patient do not have PD pathology. Uh, they may have no clear, obvious, specific pathology, but they definitely do not have PD pathology ever and when they're calling with being diagnosed as PD plus. So PD plus actually is a pathological diagnosis, a pathology based diagnosis. And then uh, while ET plus that is being thrown out there uh, is not anything to do with any pathology is just separating out clinical features. Um, let me see if there's anything else uh, here that is worth highlighting before I conclude this. Um, there is, of course, implications on research on separating out early PET versus late ET, which are, which will be more of ET plus. Uh, there will be age biases in research when when you are using ET and ET plus because younger patients will be ET and later patients will be ET plus or older people. Um, so, uh, with, with, you know, you could definitely read this short, brief paper, which is kind of a personal view, uh, published in Lancet Neurology, but is a really, really good uh, paper to read. Uh, but I want to conclude with this idea that um, there are patients who do not fit the classic essential tremor, meaning that their tremor itself is different than what we expect from an essential tremor. So a tremor itself uh, is not the classic postural tremor with re-emergence of action. This tremor may be very dystonic. A tremor may have unusual uh, evolution and unusual areas of involvement. And those patients sometimes are very hard to pinpoint. Are they... Uh, primary dystonias, uh, for example, the task-specific writing uh, tremor is often now considered by expert as just a task-specific dystonia of writing, which is predominantly tremor. But that kind of highlights this uh, challenge is that in dystonia diagnosis, we often rely on presence of dystonic postures. Well, with, uh, with syndromes like primary writing tremor, um, there is not or, uh, sometimes a very clear element of dystonic posturing. And that's why some experts like Joe Jankowicz has even worked on separating them out into type A primary writing tremor and type B and saying that one is the primary task specific dystonia of writing and is a dystonia while the other is not dystonic because they do describe these patients which have very specific writing tremor as you would expect from a task specific dystonia of writing, but no dystonic feature. And I would venture and say that in my, in my practice, I have patients who have focal, uh, have limb tremors and uh, they have strong dystonic features of the tremor, but without any obvious dystonic posturing, making it very hard to say, okay, this is dystonic tremor, but the tremor does look similar to a jerky, directional, positional, position dependent tremor of a dystonia with neutral point or null point and, and task specific worsening, all of the features you would expect from a dystonic tremor, but there is no clear dystonic posturing. Uh, so those may be the patients that need to have some classification of what they are. And when I read this title, uh, as the paper was shared with me, that ET plus, that's what I was thinking of going, of those patients who phenomenologically do not look like they have classic essential tremor. Uh, but this paper basically deals with patients who do have phenomenologically classic essential tremor, but they have additional features like ataxia, cognitive impairment, uh, dystonia, which I agree with this uh, authors of this paper uh, is probably just an evolution of essential tremor over the years and not necessarily a separate disease or separate pathology. Thank you.